Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Matthew, again, and uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening for everyone with us uh, from in, the, in North America and worldwide, and I really appreciate uh, the uh, invitation to participate in this uh, session uh, by the ACI. Um, uh, we will be presenting work on the computer simulation of 3D printed uh, polymer concrete tank we uh, are working on. Uh, this work is uh, with my PhD student, uh, uh, Ami Najvani, uh, both Dr. Daniel Murcia, and myself at the University of New Mexico. Uh, I think my job is much easier uh, because uh, with the great presentation we have today from all the speakers before, reducing a lot of the, uh, the principles and uh, discussing a lot of the basis uh, for 3D printed concrete, the main difference I'm uh, presenting in parts of the work here is the fact that we are printing three uh, polymer concrete, where we completely replace the cement binder by a polymer binder. In our case here is uh, uh, epoxy uh, binder. So in my outline of my talk, I will talk about 3D printed concrete at large, uh, then moving to the 3D printed polymer concrete, a discussion on the rheology of it, and then the time dependent green strength uh, and needed to be determined to uh, simulate the behavior of 3D printed polymer concrete, then some about the simulation of the 3D printed polymer concrete we're working on, and then uh, uh, extending to some future opportunities we see with uh, this ability of use this material and 3D printed concrete at large. Uh, as described by many of the authors, basically the 3D printing process, which we are focused here on uh, understanding and simulating, uh, include the first designing the geometry uh, that is of interest for 3D printing, and then uh, using slicing codes that many of us use uh, to develop that geometry, and then uh, use developing it into the G code, then sending it to printers and printing uh, this material, this 3D printed concrete. You see different shapes here. Um, moving from the design and simulation to the next step, which is large scale printing, which I believe is the interest of all of us, and then the large scale implementation of this 3D printing in housing and many other applications. Uh, for, um, as said, uh, sort of uh, revolutionizing the uh, concrete industry and the construction uh, with fast and um, ability to print and to construct shapes that is not um, uh, possible using the standard technologies. In, in the 3D printed concrete, um, we, we've done, done work on the cement 3D printed concrete and the polymer concrete, as I said, and basically the, the, our interest is what controls uh, the process and what controls the finer product. Uh, we've developed this, which we call it the tetrahedral model, simulating the tetrahedral model by the silica. Is basically we have a base uh, that including the materials that you are 3D printing, uh, the mixed design of the material and the printing process. These three parts representing the base, that is the design of interest. Uh, the materials and a lot of work has been done in the research on the different using of binders, either cementitious or non cementitious binders aggregate uh, rheology modifiers and additives, uh, the different mixed designs that you can do with these binders, uh, and what we, many of the authors, uh, the presenters today, we're talking about, and this session is uh, the printing process and simulating the printing process and trying to come with a method to uh, predict what is gonna happen and what, uh, how to, what's the best way to, and uh, most economic way to do this printing process including the mixing, the bumping, the extrusion system, the extrusion rate, uh, the nozzle speed, the nozzle, type, uh, the nozzle type you are using, the nozzle speed and the vertical build-up speed as well. As these three factors combine together, uh, it basically um, shape together or interact to uh, affect the rheology and the green strength of the material, which is the strength of the fresh concrete that is able to be built up and uh, make the shape and uh, resist the stresses and that rheology is basically described by viscosity and the yield strength, the structuration rate, and thixotropy, and also represented by the green strength, represented by the, uh, the stiffness evolution over time and the uh, mechanical properties evolution of time here represented by, um, as discussed by others, by failure envelopes, uh, shear strength, and so on. And all of these together, along with the mechanical properties and rheology, you're getting the green strength uh, together if affect the very hardened, final hardened properties, uh, which is the hardened properties of interest to us at large, compression, bending, and tension capacity, but also very critical, the interlayer and the interfilamentous shear strength between the, the layers, 
to ensure that the 3D printing process does not affect the integrity uh, of the concrete. Uh, this is most of the work done so far on the areas of cement concrete. When you look at polymer concrete, we are looking at polymer concrete for a number of reasons. One, then some of them related to the use of polymer concrete in large, which is the limited ductility in concrete. Cracking is a big issue. Limited tensile strength. So of course, polymer concrete allow higher ductility um, than normal concrete. Also, the limited bond strength or the, the issue of the integrity related to bond strength between layers in cementitious concrete, that can be overcome by the high bond strength typically available by polymers. And also the limited durability uh, against chemicals and corrosion in normal concrete, which can be overcome by the, uh, the fact that polymer concrete is impermeable uh, at large. So the, those factors affect the, in addition to the fact that polymer concrete is a flowable concrete, can, will enable us to replace the uh, cement by polymers and produce this 3D printed uh, polymer concrete. One of the other ideas we have is, as you've seen by many of the presenters, uh, a key issue in the simulations and the design is finding these uh, properties uh, and the, the evolution of properties of the, of the concrete, which we believe can be done um, in a more systematic way when a polymer is used, because engineering a polymer during the different stages of it is definitely um, um, an effort that can be done. So in the rheology of polymer concrete at large is a function of the aggregate uh, particles used to make the polymer concrete and the polymer, which is used as the matrix uh, in this case. Uh, so um, basically what happens is as you are adding the monomer of the polymer and adding the, uh, the initiator with it to start the polymerization process, cross-linking happen and the polymers start to harden or start to evolve. Uh, that evolution is very critical for us because it represents the matrix viscosity evolution. And that would, would represent the structuration rate and the stepsotropy will affect it. Uh, but in the meantime, a bigger effect is happening because of the interaction with the aggregate. That interaction coming from the particle size distribution of the aggregate, the shape of the aggregate, which represents the aggregate uh, backing fraction, and that interaction between the particles of the aggregate and the polymer matrix is what makes at the end of the polymer concrete. It's uh, very important to realize that the, uh, the polymers at large are Newtonian behavior with no, with, uh, no extrabic uh, property uh, that is typically can be described by this linear model. And they usually have a zero shear stress uh, as a polymer. While when we add to these polymers the uh, aggregate material and we mix it with the evolution in time, you start seeing the thick strobic behavior of the polymer concrete, which can be described by a Bingham uh, pseudo uh, plastic model. And it, you can see the, the static uh, yield stress and its evolution in time. Uh, and that can be described um, um, with, the, with this model. And you can also realize the effect of the a change in the uh, shear stress of the polymer concrete by realizing its dynamic shear stress and the evolution of that shear stress uh, with time. So when we do 3D printing of polymer concrete, basically um, we, we are interested to be able to control the change in the static uh, yield stress. And that change in static yield stress happens by through, as you can see here, the evolution of the material as it's printed compared to the, uh, the, make the, the yield stress or the shear yield stress of the material uh, that was originally printed at, at, the, at the lower layers. And that change happens through the structuration rate, which is tied to the thick sotropy. And as described by the previous speaker, that will need to be designed so to ensure that you are able to build a number of layers because that would control the stability of the layers. And despite the fact that the structuration rate is a material property, uh, the premise of 3D printing uh, of concrete and polymer concrete is that this could be scaled up and realized as to control the different variables in the printing process, including the, uh, the contour length that you are printing, including the height of the filament that's being printed, including the vertical buildup speed, including the nozzle uh, speed. Uh, so all of those factors will be uh, affecting the mechanical properties of this layer uh, when you are depositing on the top of it or extruding the top layer on it. 
and uh, the ability of the bottom layer as well to carry the stresses uh, due to the weight of the all the layers on the top. And that is realized in from a material strength point of view rather than a stability point of view as the growth that's described again by others of the steps of building the stresses on the layers. And uh, in the typical linear change uh, we observe in the static yield stress of the material. Um, and that can be guaranteed if you can ensure that the thixotropy of the material is uh, uh, value is higher than this multiplication or this formula represented by the rate of the buildup and the uh, static, the original static uh, yield stress uh, of the material. And to do this, uh, it's important to realize that this is only a material characteristic or a strength uh, characteristics does not account for the fact that there is a buckling uh, opportunity that can happen as these material number of layers grow. So to do this with polymer concrete, the first thing is to uh, evaluate the uh, thick strobe of the polymer concrete. So we do this using the uh, uh, the, uh, the shear vein, uh, vein uh, spindle here, and uh, using this vein spindle, basically we are um, we are able to characterize the thixotropy. Uh, this uh, thixotropy here is evaluated using the Whitman and Green model, which is the uh, hysteresis loop as described here. And we typically use by many researchers as the area under this curve or the area under the total curve. Um, and it can be described by uh, the herschel buckley balkley model. And using this, you can determine the thixotropy of different polymer concrete mixes. And that's what basically we did. Um, we can see here the first the, thixo, the, uh, the, the shear stress of the polymer uh, itself. And as you can see, it's linear Newtonian with zero shear stress uh, early uh, on time. Um, and the, this is the polymer by itself only. It's very important to use this to determine the change of the viscosity uh, of the polymer and how it evolves with time because that would affect the structuration rate of the polymer concrete. Um, We've done this work uh, on evaluating a number of mixes of polymer concrete. Uh, first, we came to a reference mix that is printable um, um, using the uh, uh, Novulac epoxy polymer uh, and with a number of fillers. And uh, it's very important to realize here what type of fillers to be used because it's not like normal concrete. You just can be using the fillers as aggregate, but there is a, a little distinguish or distinction here. Uh, first, we need to use some of the fumed silica material or similar materials as actually rheology modifiers. Uh, this is very critical because the polymer, as I've shown early, has zero uh, shear stress early uh, in time. So you need to this rheology modifier uh, fillers and then mix it with some fillers. In this case, we used some uh, fly ash and silica fume, fine particles to build the filling of the material. In addition to aggregate, which is in this case is uh, um, normal. Uh, sand aggregate uh, to actually um, build enough uh, volume in the polymer concrete to allow reducing the polymer binder. And that's a typical uh, strategy in using any concrete like normal concrete or polymer concrete for cost reasons and for shrinkage reasons. Uh, we've run different mixes and based on these different mixes, we evaluate and you can see some of those mixes here. This is basically the polymer uh, filler and the mix. Uh, together with the rheology modifier. And then uh, this is the mixing of the whole polymer concrete uh, together. And then this is 3D printing of the polymer concrete um, uh, material uh, to basically make samples that we can test uh, for mechanical uh, properties. From this investigation, our interest is to determine a mixed design where we actually can use it to print um, a large scale 3D printed polymer concrete. So we can look at here and the effect uh, for different mixes. Here is the effect of the rheology modifiers. And you can see that the rheology modifiers have a significant effect, can have significant effect um, on the static yield stress, uh, on the dynamic yield stress, a very little effect, uh, but on thixotropy is a big effect. And that's very critical to be able to build uh, the 3D printing of the material. And also you can see the effects here on the, of the filler to resin ratio. And uh, as the change, how does this affect the static yield stress also and the thixotropy? And the objective was to, again, as I said, to, uh, to select an optimal mix that we'd be able to print for a large scale printing. 
the process here when the interest of this uh, the study as I'm, we are presenting it here is simulation of the 3D printed polymer concrete process and to be able to print a 3D printed polymer tank. In conventional polymer concrete and conventional concrete, you basically have the design done for the mix for satisfying strength and durability requirement. You basically uh, build the forms and cast the polymer concrete in it. And there is no tie between the concrete mix design and the structural design, separate processes. In 3D printed polymer concrete or concrete at large, the design of the mix need to address the strength, the durability, as well as the printability, uh, which is related to the factors we discussed of structuration and buildability of the material. It's very critical to evaluate the rheology so that we can evaluate the thixotropy and quantify it. It's very important then to simulate the printing process to ensure the buildability and the stability. And that's what we are going to be showing, and that's what other speakers talked about, is how to ensure that the material used have enough buildability and stability in it. So the concrete mix design and structural design are, in this case, in the case of 3D printed concrete, are very integral. The, the, the process could be done as the simulation, as we've seen, or using um, other design charts that would relate the both the mechanical properties of the con polymer concrete later in age as a hardened material and the properties of the material as being printed. To do this, we determined, we done experiments to actually determine the factors for the green uh, strength of the 3D printed concrete. And this uh, green strength basically is described here by more column failure criteria. And um, there is other criteria for describing this as uh, also shown by other uh, speakers. Basically, you are, uh, we are doing the shear strength between the two layers of polymer concrete where we are applying normal stress versus the shear and applying a, a shear force and evaluating, trying to evaluate the, uh, the more column criteria as a function of time so that this could be fit to a time-dependent finite element model so that as the time pass in the printing process in the model, the mechanical properties used for both cohesion and the friction angle and other mechanical properties or other properties of the green concrete is changing with time to represent the, the difference in the different layers in the concrete. So to do this, uh, we've done the testing, and you can see here the evolution of the, uh, of the shear strength of the polymer concrete with time, starting at time zero of just material mixed and uh, being tested to about 110 times. And it's interesting here, you can see almost there is zero in reality. When you, when you look at this, there is a little evolution that is happening in the stress or the shear strength, but it's basically very small and within the, uh, the resolution of measurement. But you can see that there is a change, and that interesting thing in the change we observe it is between 60 and 90 minutes of the mix we selected, usually the significant change in the, uh, in the shear stress here to, uh, happen. Uh, we, of course, repeat this with different applied normal stress, and you can still see that the, the, the evolution here is almost constant between time zero to time 60, and somewhere between 60 and 90, that start to actually say, have a significant change and a good strength, shear strength to evolve. So we, uh, by plotting this uh, normal stress versus the shear stress for the uh, different times, we actually can find, we can realize that sort of a bilinear relationship. We can find the change in the cohesion and the change of the friction angle uh, with time. And uh, we can come up to actually this bilinear model that is describing the change in the cohesion of the polymer concrete with time and the change in the friction angle uh, with time. It's interesting that mono, many of the experiments we've done, we always have seen that bilinear effect in the case of the, bio, of the cohesion and the very much linear effect in the case of the friction angle. We believe that is the, uh, the effect that we have here that allows us here a printability window because the cohesion is smaller and that is within about 60 minutes. Uh, and that can be controlled. That's an interesting thing that you can change the mix design to change this printability window and uh, or to work it backward to determine the printability window of interest to you for the structure you are doing and come up with the material such that it satisfies this printability window. That mean change, uh, that change, significant change in the slope is happening because of the polymerization, while the material here is typically happening in polymers as a very low a rate of reaction at the very uh, specific time. At once the polymerization process starts, then it picks up pretty quickly and the materials start to harden uh, after a specific time. So this is very useful test to determine what is the time 
uh, and the printability window versus the stru structuration phase uh, necessarily to do the printing of the material. We we'll have to read it, Taha. We'll have to wrap it up. The of the uh, Young's modulus change with time uh, as we actually did the, te the testing of the finished concrete to determine the uh, modulus elasticity of the material at different time steps. Um, and uh, you can see here the failure of the material as uh, the load is increasing at that specific time. Uh, we, with this, we can actually develop the change in elastic modulus with time. And you can see there is almost zero. It's not really zero. There is a very small change, but the scale here, because this scale early is in uh, kilopascal, the early one is a very small value. But there is change happening, and also it looks like a bilinear change in the model of elasticity. We feed this information to our finite element model, and basically that allows us to start the modeling the, uh, the printing process and the stress evolution during the printing process of this polymer uh, circular structure, large structure. Uh, and that allows us to get a displacement contours and stress contour. Um, the only difference is the finite element model is time dependent. So basically, we can change the mechanical properties of the material as the printing progress, uh, changing both the green strength and the, the, the description of the uh, capabilities of the materials and start seeing if there is a chance for failure that would happen because of uh, strength requirement or uh, the, uh, stability requirement due to bucket. Basically, this is the 3D printing factory. This is another step we're working more now on is based on the 3D printing process here uh, versus the model. Welcome. So in conclusion, uh, logical behavior of 3D printed polymer concrete strongly governed by the polymerization rate of the polymer and can be adjusted using the rheology modifiers. Uh, concrete mix design and uh, structural design of 3D printed concrete are integral need to be uh, ensured together for successful printing and final product. The evolution of the cohesive strength and elastic modulus thickness of the green polymer concrete uh, seems to follow bilinear uh, a function with time uh, attributed to the bilinear nature of the polymerization process, uh, while the evolution of the friction angle is linear. Uh, the understanding of the green strength and stiffness evolution of polymer concrete is uh, very important to be able to engineer a successful 3D printed uh, polymer concrete. Uh, simulation of uh, that, uh, similar to what we show at other shows, is critical for ensuring successful printing process. Um, we believe this uh, development can open a lot of opportunities for using polymer concrete and concrete at large in application that was not easy to develop before, like offshore wind structures, energy storage, corrosion-free infrastructure, long span bridges, many other applications. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the funding from many sources over this work over many years. And I uh, would like to acknowledge my team who actually did all this work at the University of New Mexico. And I'm uh, available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was an excellent presentation. I'm 